On September 29, 2008, before passing the throne as leader of the Kadima party to Tsipi Livni, Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Olmer made unprecedented comments in an interview with Yediot Akronot. He stated, I'm saying what no previous Israeli leader has ever said. We should withdraw from almost all of the territories, including in East Jerusalem and in the Golan Heights. This change in attitude came as a surprise, as during his time in office, Israeli settlements within the West Bank increased by over 4,000 new homes. Though Omer is expected to resign around mid-October, his comments will force the new government to address the seemingly new direction within Israeli leadership. Tsipi Livni, described by the Gavni as more dovish than many in her party, has already postponed dealing with East Jerusalem to an unknown date. To understand the significance of Olmer's statements, the Real News Network spoke to Jesse Rosenfeld, a freelance journalist based in Ramallah for the past year. You have just started working on a book looking at the segmentation of the Israeli state and Israeli occupied territories. Can you tell us a little bit about your experiences in uh, Ramallah for the past year? Israel is, is organized through a structure of borders and bubbles, and what that means is that Israel defines the borders within the territory between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean Sea. You know, it defines borders through tools like the wall, through tools like checkpoints, um, as a way of cutting off Palestinians from each other, as well as interaction with Israeli Jews, or also the wall around Gaza that's been sealing that in too. And what I mean by bubbles is that it's doing this for the purpose of creating ethnically exclusive bubbles, uh, or ethnically dominant bubbles for Israeli Jews, places like Tel Aviv or places like settlements, places that live on off the privilege of um, an occupation and a racially segregated system uh, without actually having to see what the costs of it are or see what its uh, realities are looking like. I think Omer's comments are actually directly fitting within that process of um, what Israel is trying to do. It's a system of apartheid that is based on trying not to see Palestinians, trying to see land and space as Jewishly exclusive. And within Omer's comments, what we saw was not really a change materially from what his actions have been in the past or what the positions of past Israeli governments are. He talked about a Palestinian state within most of the West Bank and he talks about areas of East Jerusalem. He's not talking about a uh, real state along 67 lines and where he talks about land swap, what he's essentially hinting at is give, you know, give, giving unwanted Israeli patches of, uh, of desert for uh, Palestinian populated areas of East Jerusalem, um, especially areas around East Jerusalem settlements. The reason it fits into that borders and bubbles uh, model is because what Omer is trying to do is he's trying to come to a solution that essentially keeps as many Palestinians out of uh, Israeli site as possible while they maximize on the amount of land that they're holding for uh, Israeli Jewish exclusive use. So what's possibly new is the fact that he's really actually substantively addressing the Golan Heights and this has to do with indirect negotiations going on with Syria at the point, at this point. Um, as far as his statements of I'm saying things that no other leader has said before, Barak described himself as making huge concessions and a huge compromise for, uh, for Israel. I mean this is typical of Israeli prime ministers um, and Israeli political leaders that they want to position themselves as Israel making really tough compromises while what they're active, actually doing is enacting policy that are securing and legitimizing um, their, uh, their most profiting aspects of occupation. Um, what we're seeing different in Olmer now is that he has, you know, what many pundits call, you know, a sort of dovish approach or what really in the um, Israeli political discourse is uh, doing is that he's taken up the position or the, the speaking uh, tones of the Labour Party where you focus on how much Israel is giving, the fact that they are looking for a solution when the reality on the ground completely contradicts that. Well, Mayor is talking about giving East Jerusalem to the Palestinian control and this will be the first time that it, East Jerusalem will be actually under East uh, Palestinian control, not Jordanian, not Turkish. So what ramifications do you think that has on the, on the ground? Well, he's not talking about holistic East Jerusalem. What he's talking about is he's talking about parts of East Jerusalem. Now, East Jerusalem overwhelmingly is you know, a major, major Palestinian center. And I think what he's getting at when he's talking about parts of East Jerusalem is that he wants to deflect the responsibility of control from Israel 
onto the PA in areas that Israel doesn't have a direct interest in controlling or settling. That's, uh, and, and that's directly what Omer is getting at with East Jerusalem. I mean, the reality about you know, running for the job of the President of the United States is that what any American president will be interested in is preserving Israel as a Jewishly dominated, Jewishly exclusive state as Israel defines itself for the purpose of the U.S.'s own foreign policy interests within the Middle East. And so regardless of whether that means some kind of a um, two-state-esque uh, solution, or the maintenance of um, an occupation, or the continuing maintenance of an occupation. Um, th those will be policy decisions that an American administration will take. But ultimately, what they're looking for is a state that will stay militarized to protect, uh, to protect and advance America's interests within the region.